Thank you for joining my tech talk today for PCI's onboard filter for removal of copper contaminants in jet fuel. This effort is being funded by NAVC, and I'm Matt Steinbrenner, the Director of Product Development at PCI. PCI was founded in 1986. We're a small company with about 50 employees. About 25% of our staff has PhDs in various technical disciplines. Um, we have backgrounds from both large and small companies and both in the commercial and government space. We do a lot of work on innovation and product development, and we focus on making very small and very light solutions to problems for energy, fuel cleaning, air cleaning, chemical conversion, and combustion. So the focus of this effort is solving a problem for the Navy of jet fuel onboard carriers being contaminated with copper from copper nickel alloy in the piping and fittings. Uh, contaminated jet fuel can have negative effects on the performance of aircraft engines, including coking, and increase the frequency of maintenance and need for repairs. Also, the presence of copper in jet fuel reduces its thermal stability. And jet fuel is used in high performance aircraft, not only as a fuel, but also as a coolant. So reducing the amount of temperature that that can be used at safely can have a negative effect on aircraft performance. We're targeting Nimitz class carriers uh, for our solution here. And what we're trying to develop is an integrated filter that fits in the existing carrier filter rooms, takes the copper contamination down to less than 10 ppb, but at the same time, doesn't otherwise affect the fuel or any additive packages like icing inhibitors that are put in the fuel. After the fuel has been treated through the filter, it should meet the jet fuel thermal oxidation test for stability. And we're looking to pilot this uh, in a shipboard environment in 2022. So as I was saying, the jet fuel that's contaminated with copper has a negative impact on aircraft performance. And so actually when that happens, they take the high quality jet fuel that then has been reduced in value through contamination and use it in other applications. They could be using a lower quality and thereby cheaper solution for. There are other ways to remove copper from fuel. This isn't a unique problem to carriers. And they have things called metal deactivators, which are keelant um, that sequesters the ions that are in fuel. But using keelants on board a carrier really isn't a, an effective method based on both the flow and temperature requirements that uh, the fuels are used at. So there's no real current onboard mitigation strategy for removing contaminants from fuel. So the filter that we're developing is intended to solve that problem with a potential broader application into commercial or other non-Navy aerospace platforms and potentially even into some ground-based platforms. So the solution that we've come up with is to take our background material that's called microlith that allows um, a high flow rate, low pressure drop backbone for sorbents to be put on. So we've developed a sorbent that's tuned just to remove the copper ions without otherwise affecting things like the icing inhibitors and made sure that it's able to have a low pressure drop so it doesn't affect fuel delivery throughout the carrier and to the aircraft. It's got to integrate with the existing shipboard systems, right? This isn't a replacement, this is an integration, and it'll have to meet the performance requirements for other systems installed on board ships, shipboard shock and so on. So we started this work in 2018 and have taken it through phase one and phase two. We've completed uh, CFD and done lab scale testing, demonstrating the efficacy of the filter. We're doing pilot scale testing now, and we've been working with Huntington Ingalls Newport News for shipboard integration and design concepts to make sure that the ultimate solution we're going towards is practicable for installation onboard carriers. 
Here you can see concepts for installation of the copper filter onboard Nimitz class carriers. In the bottom right portion of the slide, you can see a block diagram identifying major system components. And then on the left hand side, you can see the existing filter room and a concept for installation of the copper filter in that room, allowing for access and serviceability as well as ease of installation. On the upper right hand corner, you can see the results of a small adsorbent bed processing contaminated fuel and reducing the contamination levels down to acceptable amounts. Copper contaminated jet fuel was analyzed prior to being run through our filter. It had icing inhibitors, it failed the thermal oxidation stability test, and had over 400 ppb of copper in it. After being run through our filter, the icing inhibitors remained in the fuel. We were able to pass thermal oxidation stability on the fuel, and the copper was removed by almost two orders of magnitude. So we've demonstrated that the filtration solution can do its job by removing copper and allowing a passive thermal oxidation stability without negatively impacting icing inhibitors or other fuel additives. In order to transition the technology to the fleet, there are a few more activities that we're working to complete. One is making sure we have the best program or record and PM shop engaged to drive this forward. There are multiple programs or record and PMs that could be the right path, and we want to make sure that we identify the correct ones to move forward. We will have to complete on-ship testing after we get through our pilot scale demonstrations. And we're working with the shipbuilder and the Navy to get approvals, get testing set up for things like shipboard shock, and continue to develop the installation and maintenance instructions, logistics package, and so on. Our TPOCs are very knowledgeable in this area, and we're working closely with them to find the right PM and program a record for advocacy to bring this technology forward. Our business model is to develop our technologies to the TRL 5 or 6 stage and allow for military evaluation of the technology's capabilities. Thereafter, we look for EMD programs to continue the advancement of the technology to make it available for procurement. During these efforts, we'll focus on our military customer and application while we're looking for broader expansion into the market for the technology. And we also develop key relationships with potential licensees or manufacturing partners that can implement the technology and make sure it's brought forward to the customer in a cost-effective and high-quality manner. Outside of the specific carrier application for this filter, we're looking at applications for commercial jets, as well as with other branches of the DOD for their aircraft that require high quality jet fuel, and looking at things on stationary or ground applications as well, including turbines that uh, also need high quality fuel for a great application. Although the last year has cut the growth of jet fuel consumption in the world, we expect that it will go back up again and there will continue to be requirements for high quality fuel as our jet aircraft continue to become more advanced. Outside of the technology development, we are continuing to look for program management as well as programmer records that will be the best suited to bring this technology forward to carriers and looking for manufacturing partners for the housings, the assembly, to carry out the testing, um, as well as potential licensees or installers for the technology. Uh, folks like Huntington Ingalls, Newport News are a great example. And we're looking for the same in the commercial application where the requirements for things like shipboard shock don't exist and we may be able to offer a housing solution that is less robust for those applications. Thanks for spending your time listening to the Tech Talk today. Please feel free to follow up with uh, us or to learn more about precision combustion, either through our website or reaching out to me uh, or our principal investigator, Kududa Leibig.